I'm Javier Loya, and I'm a job creator. What would you say to President Obama about creating jobs in America? First thing I would say was we need access to capital, we need a business tax-friendly environment, and we need, uh, we need leadership. When we speak to access to capital, there's several things a president can do. First of all, the Small Business Administration is very important to the economy. It allows entrepreneurs like myself to be able to get loans, to start uh, businesses, to create jobs, which all feeds into the system. And, and as we know, entrepreneurs are the lifeblood of, of uh, job creation. It's very cumbersome to go out and get an, a, a loan, whether it's a, a federal loan or whether it's a commercial loan. So streamlining that process to help, help business owners go out there and get access to capital, so to, to make it a, a business-friendly environment, to address you know, regula regulation so that uh, it helps the right people get the right capital. So those are the kinds of things that uh, I believe the, the administration has the power to do. Are there governmental regulations standing in the way of job creation? Well, part of it is the perception that, that uh, we as business owners and, and citizens of the United States have. We feel that the government is going to be taxing us. So as we plan for a, a new business product, as we plan for a new business office, we've got those things in mind thinking that taxation is coming down uh, the queue. And so part of that uh, creating a business-friendly environment is, is being able, the administration, the president communicating to us, is, hey, we're not raising your taxes. And hey, we're going to do everything we can to uh, pr provide more access to capital, meaning uh, we're going to work with fiscal policy so that banks uh, w will feel comfortable that they can lend and lend to business owners. With, with leadership comes, comes making uh, you know, bold decisions, which may be contrary to his party, which may mean you know, we're not going to tax, we're, we're not going to uh, 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 you know, espouse policies that, are, that uh, have a lot of regulation. And so those are the kinds of things I think the president can lead upon and uh, the House and the Senate can follow. What can government do to enable small businesses to start hiring again? Well, I mean, like, like any person, it's, it's simplistic. If, if we're going to create a job, we've we got to have some, some hope, some future that, hey, we're going to make money doing this. And so I, I've got to be able to, to understand the, my cost of capital, the, the cost of doing business. Uh, we're fortunate that we have our, our business in Texas. It's very business friendly. And I, I think in a lot of ways we can show leadership to the rest of the nation on, on how entrepreneurs can be empowered. So to answer your question, what do I first look at is like the opportunity. First, if there's an opportunity, how are we going to make money? Then we can go out and start hiring. Now, if I feel like, hey, you know, I'm going to get taxed, uh, my, my payroll taxes are going to increase, uh, my personal income taxes, because as an as a entrepreneur, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, my, my income comes from my business. So if I, if I feel like my, my taxes are increasing, then I start looking at it as a risk-reward ratio. And if, if the risk out, outweighs the reward, or if it's neutral, then why take the chance? What would it take to enable you to hire more people? In my business in commodities brokerage and financial services to the banking community, uh, we believe more clarity on Dodd-Frank we believe that uh, the Dodd-Frank overhang, not only what, uh, what's been proposed, but uh, the uncertainty around regulatory reform are all things that uh, are causing us a, a lot of uh, concern about uh, growing our business. How is your business coping with Dodd-Frank? Well, well, first of all, as an entrepreneur and, and lawyers, so, you know, I naturally cringe when I hear, when I hear lawyers. But... Uh, uh, unfortunately, we've, we've had to address all the regulatory change, and so yes, we've got a full-time general counsel who's got several uh, law firms working for him to help us not only uh, interpret uh, uh, pending regulation, but also position ourselves to be able to uh, uh, continue and grow and thrive in this business environment. How would you act differently to avoid another Enron other than Dodd-Frank? As a business owner in the commodities field, we're, we're not against regulation. We believe there should be oversight. We believe that uh, uh, efficiencies and transparency are positive for our marketplace. But I think there's other ways to achieve that than having a, a, a government body with all kinds of uh, regulations that, that we don't even know the, uh, the details yet. And I believe, again, that can be done through, uh, through technology. In our, in our own firm, EOX Live, we've spent a lot of resources and time to be able to position ourselves so that the uh, market can receive information instantaneously 
when transac transactions are done. It's going to help this, this market become more vibrant and ultimately help us create jobs. Does government mandate regulations that are muddy, unclear, and hard to interpret? As an entrepreneur, it's, it's, it's difficult as it is to, to run your own business and to create jobs and work hand-in-hand -hand with employees to, to have a vision and a business model. But what makes it even more difficult is when our government uh, hands you a roadmap with no details and tells you, hey, we're going we're gonna to make up the rules. We're not sure what the rules are going to be like, but we're going to let you know. Those are the kind of things that make it difficult for an entrepreneur to go out and build his business with all that uncertainty. Entrepreneurs like myself do nothing, sit on their hands, and that's not what America's about.